In this video, I'm going to show you the patented method to actually balance a tire at home on a bubble balancer. So this is the bubble balancer I use. I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end, but just get that on there, get it centered, and it's pretty straightforward. You got a bubble, it's off centered. Um, this is the heavy side. I just need to put weight over here to balance it out and to center my little bubble level, essentially, my 360 degree bubble level. So what exactly is this patented method that works so well? Let me show you. Um, the, the patent itself actually talks about these clamp-on weights. I'm actually not going to use clamp-on weights. We're going to use stick-on weights, and you should use stick-on weights as well because they work way better for this method. Um, but when, the, when it was patented, these didn't exist, these little stick-on weights. Anyway, the idea behind it is you can get a better, more accurate counterbalance by doing a Y method. So if my out of balance is right here, if I have a heavy spot right here, what I do is I do a Y with my weights. Instead of just doing a weight directly across from it, I will do a Y pattern. So heavy spot, heavy spot, heavy spot. You know, I counteract the heavy spot. And this actually looks like I might actually need three, maybe not. That's too much. Two on each one. But here's the magic of this technique is these weights, if you take these two sets of weights, each one's a quarter ounce, quarter ounce, quarter ounce, so there's half ounce, half ounce. If you put them directly across from each other on a tire, they completely counteract each other, and it's zero. I mean, you could just add weights on the opposite side of the tire, nothing. But as we come down, they add more weight to where they center. And so if I want to fine tune these weights, all I have to do is move them in and that's too much, that's too much, whoops, and right there I'm perfectly balanced. You can just move them around and you get it perfectly shifted, where if you just do one in the center, you're left with, you know, that is that is um, too much weight, and that is not enough. So. You have to kind of, you know, I have to choose between those. It's not a quarter ounce and it's not a half ounce. So this method allows you to do both, but it also does a really cool thing. And that is you got a heavy spot here. Now you got a heavy spot here and here. It creates a triangle and distributes the weight around the tire so much better. The tires ride so much nicer. I've been using this technique for almost 10 years now and it works phenomenal. So now I know approximately how much weight I need. I'm gonna take a piece of tape. I'm actually gonna tape it to each one of these. So I can actually put it in its real position because that's not where, where it's going to be sitting. I want it to sit down in the middle of the wheel where it would sit. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that is, I mean, I could just go stick them on, come back, check it, stick them on, come back and check it. But I wanna get them where they are so I can make sure I'm nice and balanced on the wheel because the, um, the way that counterbalances actually work, the way that the weights actually work, is the further out from the center, the more acts on the wheel. So a quarter ounce right there makes no difference at all. But a quarter ounce actually way out here on the tip, the edge of the tire makes actually, it's way too much weight. The tire's way heavy right there. So. You know, you get a little rock in the tire, it actually throws out your tire the same amount. One little teeny rock will throw out the tire the same amount as like about a quarter in, a quarter ounce sitting right here. You know, an eighth of an ounce rock, is, you know, even lighter than that, little rock out here throws your tire further out of balance than your weights do. So, so now I can just sit there and look at my, look at my bubble. And these rims are kind of difficult for this because it looks like I actually need one about right there, so I'll just put it in the same plane. Yeah, I need one about right there and the other one right about there. So now it's just a matter of me marking where these go. I can leave, these, or I can just leave these taped on. I can mark it, turn around, and just stick weights on the inside and come back and check it. 
I'm just gonna clean it up real fast. It's just like a scotch Bright pad. And I'm just using some steel stick-on weights for the stickiness pre-attached. I'll just lightly apply them real fast. I just barely touch them on there so they stick and then I go re-measure or just check it again and stick them down permanently. Beautiful. Now if you have a steel wheel, I would still use the stick on weights. But say you have a steel wheel and you really want to use these clamp on weights that are just burning a hole in your shop, is you would do this exactly the same way. You would set them out, but say this was a half ounce, this is a half ounce. You would take half of that, so quarter, quarter, and you'd put these on the outside and you'd put these two on the inside. That way, everything is perfectly balanced and you don't have more weight on the outside of the rim than the inside of the rim. Because if you do this, if you just put these on the outside, you throw your dynamic balance off. I'll talk about that in, this, in a second. Where if you have the stick on weights, and you stick the stick on weights dead center inside the rim down here, you don't throw your dynamic balance at all because you're centering the weight. Car part, fetch, car part fetch. The dead? Dynamic versus static balancing. Both of these will come up. Dynamic balancing is better. The bubble balancer or any method you do at home is simply static balancing. Not the best, but it works. And it actually, if you have aftermarket rims on your car, likely, even if you take it to the best tire shop out there, all they can do is static balancing. Because you need clamp on you need to be able to put weights on the inside and the outside to be able to dynamic balance and that's not an option in all tires nope can't dynamically balance those nope can't dynamically balance those ones either yep you can dynamically balance those but dang that's ugly but the difference okay i have half ounce here that's out of weight all i do put a half ounce here balances it spins that's static balance Rear axle doesn't care. Front axle is where dynamic balance is supposedly better. And I'll sh sh tell you why, I mean it is, but say that half ounce wasn't spread out of balance, the, you know, the extra weight wasn't right across the whole tread pattern, but it was just located right here on the inside. You know, we got half ounce of weight just sitting right here. And so we need to counter out, counteract that because I'll show you what happens. On a front steer axle, the tire cannot move this way because of the suspension, but you know it can move this way because of the way you steer. So the heavier spot right here, as it rotates, actually wants to be centralized over the spinning hub. So what will happen as it spins, this heavier spot will naturally want to throw itself out to the furthest point. And so it will turn the steering wheel. I mean, I am super over exaggerating this for this demonstration. And then as it comes back down, the suspension will recenter it and it comes back here it'll actually want to throw itself because it's on the, this side it'll want to throw itself out this way and then it'll recenter itself so ideally if you had a huge amount of weight right here what would happen is you would get a shimmy like this in your steering wheel if it was a huge amount of weight sitting right here so to dynamic balance it all they do is take a weight right here and put it down here so half ounce from here to half ounce, you know, on the inside of the rim right here, and it'll balance itself. And so those two will be brothers and they will just balance each other as they go around. So if you just took a weight, say it was on the inside right here, and you just put one weight right here, those actually, if you put a half ounce here, now I have a one ounce of dynamic out of balance. And so the weight out here, and in here, they actually help each other to give you more wobble. That's where dynamic balance comes into effect. Is by itself, it's not maybe too bad, but when you add the weight on the opposite side, then it does become bad. But 
in the method I showed of putting it centralized, and this is what, even on custom rims and stuff like that, where you can't actually put a weight on the inside and outside, what they'll do is they centralize the weight. So they put one weight, they'll put the sets of weights just right here in the center because that doesn't really make it, it doesn't make it worse. And it actually adds weight and actually kind of counteracts some of the dynamic. It doesn't make a perfect dynamic balance, but it gives you better dynamic balance. That's why you want to put stick on weights on the inside or with the four sets of weights, um, like the patent shows, you put one, you know, you put some on the inside and the outside so you don't actually make the dynamic balance any worse. This is what I'm using. It's made by Challenger. I actually have a Harbor Freight one right here. Um, this is usable, but pretty poorly built and I had a lot of trouble with this. And I think this is actually my second one. The first one gave me so many fits that I ended up using the second one and I actually have some notes on here to actually get repeatable results. But um, you can see that this is exactly what all the China ones now, Harbor Freight ones copied this Challenger. But what you don't see is you see a nice clean casting on the inside of this, this one right here. And on the uh, China one, you see really poor casting. If you look down in there, the hole isn't even centered. Um, the hole's not drilled center. These holes out here for these pegs aren't centered. You can see really see on this one. And there's even a chunk of aluminum sitting right here for no reason at all in the casting, but to add weight to one side which I thought you wanted it centered. But you can see they even machined a little bit off the inside there, nothing over there. So, I mean, this one did work, but it gave me a lot of fits. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. If you're gonna do this, um, also is, I'll have to show you the play in the head right here. But if you get one and you can't get repeatable results, take the tire off, move it 180, and it gives you a different reading. Take this back and just get another one immediately because it'll just you'll just you'll never get a good balance if this thing isn't balanced and good. So this is what I've been using for wheel weights forever. Um, where do you get wheel weights? These are all recycled, essentially. You know, if I was at a wrecking yard or something, I see them on the ground, pocket them, parking lots. Uh, I started off the bulk of my collection just by going to a tire shop asking if I could have some old wheel weights, and they just handed me a small coffee can tin of them, which was probably about probably about half of this. And the rest I've just kind of collected over years, just finding in parking lots and stuff. You know, check out that gem. You know, some of them are kind of neat. You know, I'll just, I don't use these very often anymore. These are generally for steel wheels and stuff like that. There's some, if they have like an A on them, where's one with an A, like that's an A, that's for an aluminum wheel, but most of these are for steel wheels, aluminum. aluminum. Um, I mainly just use these stick on things. And what I do is just sand down the back and I just take a uh, some body molding adhesive and just double-sided foam tape and just stick it to the back and stick them back on. Um, I recently acquired a bunch of these, and these are steel, but these are by far easier just to, because <laughs> they already have the tape installed and they're clean, just to put those on and be done with it, and they'll last me a lifetime, even right there. Uh, but if you just need some, just go to a tire shop, ask them for some, or just start collecting them on the side of the road. Or, you know, when you're doing your old tires, just take them off your old tires. Generally. I find that I have the exact same amount that I need off the old tires as I do for the new tires. Sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more, but you don't need anywhere near this to actually start doing them and changing your own tires and balancing them. I do have a video on using a gravity method on a wheel that actually spins freely for trailers and stuff like that. I'll put a link to that video. If you don't even have to have a machine at all, all you need is some recycled weights and you're done. I have tons of videos on tire changing bars and stuff like that using a manual tire changer. I'll put a link to those as well. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, put a lot of information down in the video description if you want details on all this, but um, thanks for watching guys. Have a good one, bye. Here you go, get me the blocks. Huh? Hold on, wait for it. Hey, give me that block of wood. Hey, nope, give me the block of wood. Yeah, yep. Come here. Oh, you got that one? Okay. Good job. Hey, bring it here. Drop it. Drop it. Come here. Drop it. Come here. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. 
Thank you. Hey, did you get me that one? Did you get me that block of wood? Yeah? Good job. Hand it here. Good job. Thanks. You're quite the helper. You want to be rewarded now? Let me get your tennis ball. There you go.